Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion guys and today the E63S is already broken in under 24 hours. Guys, you already know what to do. Hit that intro. Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Thank you. Guys, it's been less than 24 hours and the E63 is already broken so i want to show you <laughs> what's going on and everything like that so let's jump into it now quickly here i'm gonna include a quick clip of what happened yesterday all right guys so i got the car back again and here's a quick joke i went to go take a test drive Stop vehicle, leave engine running while transmission is cooling. Guys, whew, I'm just happy I got the car back. Hopefully that's nothing to really look into. And yeah, man, I'm really happy I got the car back. Now, moving forward, I've been doing a lot of research. And because this M177 isn't kind of like the M177 on the C63, there's more nannies, there's more things that are involved with this car. So... It seems like on these cars, it's quite a common problem that your transmission may start getting hot. Not a check engine light. You may go into a lint mode type of situation, but the car would tell you to pull over and allow the transmission fluid to cool off. And most of this work was done under warranty. And what I mean by that is guys will take the car for warranty and here are some of the causes of this issue. One, there is a um, inner cooler pump or a heat exchanger pump that pumps the fluid below here in the fender. And that there's three pumps from what I was told. And the one pump, I guess that's for the transmission cooler or heat exchanger, stopped working. So that your, tr your transmission uh, temperature will start to go up a lot, a lot more. That's one. Second reason will be there is a puncture now there'll be a puncture in the front heat exchangers themselves which is right here there's one here there's a cooler oil cooler here there's a condenser and then there's a, another one over here too so that would be three now i don't know which heat exchangers for the transmission itself but it's one of those three now i did take a look to see if i can find any leaks anything leaking under the car in the last 24 hours during the day and i and i did drive the car and i i even took off the engine cover and looked down to see if i see any coolant leaking no but i did smell a hint of coolant smell but it could have just been the brake pads honestly um because when the guy pulled up you know it is what it is so there's also two reservoirs for this car. Now, this is the reservoir for the um, uh, for the uh, for the radiator, which is red. And there's also another reservoir that's under here. Now, let me pick this up briefly. <laughs> Used car, some of the stuff is already broken. Now, the next reservoir is right here. Now, this reservoir. I can't find exactly online what this is for. I've been searching enough. Technically, kind of like the M1, uh, just like my C63, which had this reservoir like right here, it's for the coolant for the heat exchangers, uh, for the heat exchangers for the turbos, right? And that's how that system keeps, um, uh, that's how that system keeps the heat exchangers a temperature cool. Now, I did follow this line. This is the line that feeds into it. And that line went all the way across and comes up above here on top of the, I believe this is either, I'm thinking it's the ECU, but I don't know what it is yet. I'm still researching the car because honestly, I haven't had it more than two weeks. Um, and the coolant goes that way and it goes down and then it goes to the back to the heat exchanger. And the same thing for this one here. It tees off here and it comes down here. And I guess that runs through the heat exchanger or maybe not. I'm still confused and I'm going to look up the part number for that soon so I could know that a little better. Cool. But remember, I'll probably update the video just to make sure I am saying the right thing. Next, um, you have the drain hose or the hose from the bottom of it, which comes all the way down here. It goes straight across under here. And then it goes straight down to, I believe, a, uh, another water pump, a pump over there. Now, here's the crazy part about it. When I first got the car yesterday, and I, as I showed you in the video, I popped it, and then boom, empty. 
this thing is empty. I can pop it all the way up, move it around, nothing. And even when I press on this, it's like nothing in here. I don't feel any coolant, nothing comes up or anything like that. So this thing is almost bone dry. And I think the ECU knows that. And that's why it's saying, hey, it's not giving you an actual fault code, but it's like, hey, there's something wrong here. So I already looked up some of the common causes of puncture. I don't see any physical, physical leaks or punctures or any smell, necessary smell. And I looked under the car and everything. Two, uh, they said it could be the heat, ex the heat exchanger pump itself, which could be a thing. But honestly, I don't know what this cool that a reservoir has to do with the transmission itself from what i've been reading once again it's very vague about these cars like on the infinities your heat exchanger coolant is only for your heat exchangers your intercoolers that's it it goes to the front radiator right and then it goes to the heat exchangers which are more down up under here right but they're saying that this system actually uses two which is kind of confusing me so he's saying that there's also a cooler for the transmission right and i know there are coolers for the transmission that exists for all the cars out there because that's or, or, or you call them like a transmission heater right and it looked like there was a transmission heater down here it's a silver silver box like because the cooler the pumps usually look black but the heaters usually look like aluminum they usually look you know like aluminum or silver and those are technically the coolers and or heaters or the stabilizers, right? And they're saying that that uh, reservoir actually does one part for the heat exchangers and then the other part for the transmission cooler or heater. So that could be it, but what we're going to let's get in the car because it's starting to rain, but I'm going to finish it off when we get in the car. All right, guys, so let's do a quick emotion start. You press on the brake pedal. You left the right paddle and then you pressed it. Start it regular. You don't, it sounds nice though. <laughs> but, anyways, so here's a funny thing there's no issues with the car at all. The car will start up regular. That's the transmission fluid temperature, which is right there, right here, the bottom one. And this one is the 68. And the bottom one went about to 250 degrees, which usually is way too high. Usually it'll be around 180 to maybe 200, 210 Fahrenheit, but not 250. That's way too hot. So all in all, uh, I contacted the service advisor that I was, I went through enough service advisors, guys. Contacted them and they're saying they're trying to set up a loaner now for me. Now, as much as I may not like what the process was, was going on, it seems that they're making this at least, I don't have to come out of my way, which means I'm saying is they're gonna send me a loaner car, drive to me, give me another loaner, and then pick this car and drive it back. So at least I don't have to pay for my time and the inconvenience of that. It's just that once again, it sounds like my car may be going back somewhere because of someone else's mistake. And this would technically be the First, second, third mistake Mercedes of Manhattan is making. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, nonetheless, I'll see you guys in the next video with any other update that comes along. So, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost Emotion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.